Hello everybody, thank you for tuning in again. Welcome to another video. We're not in the workshop, you know where we are by now. You've seen this lane enough times. You know exactly what's happening. So we are back at the repair shop. I'm very glad to be back here. I've been working for the last few weeks on a secret project that I definitely can't tell you about. It's definitely not another TV show, that's for sure. We have got a busy schedule. Oh, get run over. Oh yep. We've got a busy schedule. It's literally hit the ground running. We're straight into it. But this is the start of a new series. Monday morning, first thing. I thought, what better time to do a vlog? Not only is this the first day of a new series here filming, this is actually the first week where the new series is actually aired on BBC One. By the time this video comes out, which is Sunday, have a good weekend, hope you're enjoying it, you will have seen episode one of the new series which has gone out on BBC One, the Austin J40 pedal car. I've done quite a lot of press interviews about this new series and every single one I have, honestly, I've just been like, this is the best series. That car, that pedal car, those the people that owned it, it's such an amazing story. By far, the favorite thing I think I've fixed here. Um, I've got a few more things. I'm not in every episode, but I've got a few more things popping up throughout. A hammer, there's a hammer coming up, which is really good as well. I need to pop back in a bit, get my van, unload all my tools, bring all my tools back in again. I'll try and film as much as I can throughout the week. I don't actually know who's in. I think Will's back in tomorrow. I'll try and grab him for a bit. I'm not sure if Lucia's in. I honestly don't know. I'm going in completely blind. I've really got no idea. I've been so busy with this other project that I can't talk about. That's not a TV show. I have been a bit out of the loop with, with the repair shop. So I've got no idea who's in this week, but I will do my best to catch whoever we can. Oh, another day, here we go, right. No, it's not lunchtime. It was Monday morning when we last spoke and I was expecting to have a nice calm week and catch you at lunchtime, go for a little wander around and talk about stuff, look around the museum. <laughs> and that has not happened. It's been the busiest week. Now, and I feel like I say that every time I come down here. It's just, it's relentless. It is so busy, there's so much going on. Obviously, I can't talk about too much of it, but yeah, it's been, it's been good. All of a sudden, just like that, it's now Friday. The whole week is gone. I've done hardly anything that I needed to do. I needed to order some parts and do some, a few bits for the Ranala, but I've done nothing. Pete Woods is in today. He is the musical instrument restorer. Um, he's a fascinating guy. He's so, so talented. Whoa, run over. He is so talented, very old school. He loves it. Um, I'm going to try, if, depending on what he's doing today, I'm going to try and catch him. I'll try and sit down with him and ask him a few questions and just have a little chat because we don't really see him much. He's on the show, but not all the time. He doesn't really have social media, so he's a little bit um, mysterious. So I'll sit down with him, ask him some questions, and we just feel, just, we'll just get to know Pete. How about that? <laughs> well, there's Pete now. Here he is. Let me try, we'll try and catch him now. See, I'll, I'll ask him if he can, if he's free at lunch. Let's have a chat, hang on. Here he is, oh, look. Hey. How are you doing? I was just talking about you. Oh, was you? Yeah. I was being, all, all I, bad, I, I was being nice, yeah. <laughs> Makes a change. It does, not it? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing at lunchtime? What am I doing at lunchtime? Dinner and have a walk, I expect. Have a walk. Can we have a sit down and have a chat and film it for a video? Yeah. No yeah? yeah? We'll quiz you on some stuff. Quiz me. We'll be gentle if I can remember it. <laughs> Brilliant. Have you got the answers ready for me? No. <laughs> See you down there. <laughs> well, there we go. Perfect. Now it's Friday. I have seen the new first episode of The Repair Shop. I mean, we, did, we took that J40 to Revival, which was September, and now it's May. So it was nearly a year. Getting on for it, almost. Um, I've been waiting a long time to see it and I was not disappointed. I hope you enjoyed it. There was a huge amount of work that went into it. So I can clear up now, it's probably a good time actually. There were so many comments on Twitter and my Instagram and stuff like that that I've not been able to answer. So yes, all of the chrome parts, the bumpers, we did straighten them all up, the hubcaps, headlights, everything was the original parts, replated. All of that chrome plating was done by Lee at Hockley Enterprises, who you will have seen from the zinc plating video. Um, when we plated the Ranala sign down in Essex. If, the, if you haven't seen that video, go and have a look, or go and watch it. So George, who you met on the previous video with the plating the Ranala sign, 
is the guy that actually plated all of those parts and my goodness they did a good job so the red paint was color matched to the original it had been repainted in the past um, but there were areas inside where it was the original paint so i was able to get a really nice good color match for the original red which is uh, i think it's tartan red it's like an austin color few eagle-eyed viewers out there noticed the number plate it did change so when it arrived it had the original number plate sort of which is like a sort of transfer like a sticker so the brother that sadly passed away has already registered to run the london marathon he was super fit very into running and sports he was entered in to run the london marathon and he had his bib number and his marathon number and everything like that and even throughout his illness he was convinced and he was always adamant that he was going to get better and run the london marathon um, sadly that didn't happen he didn't make it i don't know if you could notice but in the arrival um, his brother had it tat his, that number tattooed on to the back of his leg there's just not enough time in the show to use everything um, but we did talk about it in when they first brought it in in the arrival um, dan sort of caught it on the back of his leg and filmed it and we talked about it so when it came to painting the number plates it was like i had the original numbers there and i was just like I mean, I was sitting with Dan and we were just like, oh, that would be nice, wouldn't it? That would be quite a nice thing to do, just to make it their pedal car, him and his brother, their childhood and every, you know, everything they've been through. And Dan was like, yeah, 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 let's do it. Come on, do it. So we did it uh, and nobody really knew. We didn't really talk about it uh, and it didn't really come up in the reveal. When we gave it back to them, they obviously were quite sort of blown away with everything else. They didn't really notice straight away. It wasn't until we got to Goodwood that they really noticed and saw it and they were over the moon. They were absolutely over the moon. They were, it was a, quite a nice moment, um, but that wasn't on camera. They didn't film that part. Some of the things that we do, a lot, a lot of work goes into these things that doesn't make it onto the telly. I know on the TV show, it makes it look like it's really easy. It's all taken apart, two bolts and it's taken apart. Then it's all sandblasted. Even between sandblasting it and painting that red paint was hours and hours and hours of sanding down and panel beating and hammering and denting and welding and lots of other bits needed welding. There was a huge amount of work that went into it and it all kind of gets sort of distilled down and they just pick the best bits. But um, yes, so well done. If you've noticed the number plate change, if anyone deserves such a nice pedal car, they do. They were a lovely, lovely family. And then getting to go to Revival, you probably noticed that everyone got dressed up in their boiler suits. That's because that was actually at the end of the last race of Revival. So Goodwood Revival is, I think, world renowned for like the biggest vintage car show in the world. Um, it's, it's amazing. They really go to town with the dressing up. Everyone there dresses up in this in character. There's just beautiful stuff everywhere, very sort of 50s inspired. Um, and so all the crew were wearing boiler suits. The, little, the two little boys had little boiler suits on, little hats. Everyone got into the spirit of it. Everyone got into character. Um, and we went there and it was literally, the grandstand was full of people still. The last race had just finished. And whilst that last race was going on, we were kind of hanging out in the pits just there next to the track with the little pedal car waiting to wheel it on amongst lotus 11s d types you know some of the most amazing jags all these crazy v12 cars all of these cars running around and we were standing next to them with our little pedal car and as soon as the last race finished the uh, the, the marshal was kind of like ushered us on and we went straight on the track just after they'd finished it was amazing it's absolutely brilliant but uh, yeah so that's it it was awesome really really good that's absolutely my favorite item i've ever fixed on the repair shop um, favorite reveal and the family were absolutely lovely i hope that those two kids are enjoying it and riding that thing around bashing it into things and causing their own damage so i can restore it again in 20 years time for them not sure where he is i think he might have stood me up you're spilling your tea you're spilling your coffee i'm not i'm not i just wanted to for this video introduce you because some people may not know who the hell you are you are known here for being the musical instrument restorer. I thought I was it known here for being completely bonkers. Yes, yeah. that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Drums, brass, woodwind, woodwind yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. Where did that, going back, I know it's a long time ago, Ooh. going back to you being a little boy, where did it all start? When I left school, <laughs> um, we had somebody come round from like the local education place and the job centre. Yeah. As it was then, the employment exchange, and they said, what do you want to do? And uh, I played drums at the time. I also played French horn. Okay. And I said, I want to be a French horn maker or a drum maker. 
not a player. You didn't want to be in a band. No, no, I didn't think I was good enough. Yeah. Granddad was a, a carpenter, you know, it was sort of history, I suppose, you yeah. know, an evolution. And um, the bloke just sort of looked at me and laughed, and he said, now, come on, be sensible. <laughs> and two weeks later, he rang me up about 10 o'clock at the morning at school. I got pulled out of class. He said, can you be up in London by 2 o'clock? And there I was, getting an interview to be a drum maker. No. Mm. So what, you left school, done, that was it? Left school, I started working the next week. Really? Yeah, and that was it. With a drum maker? Yeah. Who would we know? Which one? It was the people at the firm that I've now got called Henry Potters. Henry Potters. Usually the careers advice people at school are renowned for giving you terrible advice and be yeah. like, no, don't bother, you're never going to do that, go and get a real job. But yeah. they sorted out the interview. They sorted out the interview and um, whoever that man was, he could well be dead by now. Yeah, right? but yeah. Thank you very much, uh, I've had a good time. He did well, we owe him, yeah. I owe him a drink. No, you didn't finish your, finish the year, finish your, no, get no, your qualifications. I, um, I was right at the end. I'd okay. Taken all my exams. Right. A um, couple of them weren't worth taking. You know, like me English. I, I yeah, same. Yeah. Me, you know. <laughs> then I, I went in first day and I made the tea in the morning. Yeah. And everybody moaned, so I thought I'd get out of that. And then <laughs> Classic, the do a bad job so they don't host you again. Yeah. yeah, in the <laughs> afternoon, you get taught how to make the tea properly. <laughs> <laughs> so, then, so I guess potters made drums, yeah. the, as you'd expect, like wooden hooped, yeah, traditional, traditional drums. Yeah. So did they do everything in house? The drums, the woodwork, the painting? Paint yeah. it, line work, lining and all that? All, all the lining, I went through learning all that. Um, yeah, we done sort of everything. The only thing you got was you got the wooden steam bent. Right, okay. What's called open lap, it wasn't to size. But, but it's already it rounded steam shape. Because, I mean, the best way to steam bend wood is when it's just been cut, isn't it? When it's green, yeah. So, and then yeah. it'll put, be put away for years. In that round shape. In that round state. God, so you, that was a good place to do your apprenticeship then. So you could dot around, work your way around, do the woodwork, do the painting. Did you kind of dabble in everything? Yeah. Yeah, yeah nice. Yeah. I think I was the only one that managed it. I was one of the last, about the last person to learn. But I ended up actually helping out in the flute shop, which is a woodwind. They had flute as well. So it we wasn't just drums. The old military flutes. Okay. Yeah, and the, uh, the bugles. Ah. So that's where the brass and metalworking comes in. That's where metalworking comes in because they used to make the drum shells and I also learned to make bugles, you know. When so, we weren't fully staffed as we used to be, getting near the end of being in London, yeah. you know, it used to go, oh, you know, can I have Pete down here for a week? So and so's on holiday, you know, and I've got to get these 50 bugles out, you know. Yeah, and yeah. And so off so I went. You became useful. Is that all? Oh. Well, no, I've never been used. No. <laughs> <laughs> but they moved you around so you could have to go. So they made bugles from scratch. They had all the yeah, jigs there. Yeah, so, you uh, just and get the copper sheet in. Are they copper? Yeah. Oh, wow. They're copper and brass, but you get the copper sheet in. Flat sheet, and you do everything. Yeah. Roll the, the horns and everything. You, That's right. Yeah. yeah, spin it up. We used to have a spinning lathe in there. Really? Yeah. I've never had a go at that. I'd love to do that. Did you used to do the metal spinning? Yeah. Have you, had, the, yeah? But, you know, just, just for the bell. Or the yeah. bell, the trumpet end. Yeah. yeah. You hammer it out and then you finish Brilliant. it off by spinning it. Love it. God, how long were you there for? I was there for about three years. Then we closed in London and everything moved to Aldershot. Like we're talking about late 60s, early 70s. Uh, Aldershot was sort of moving from London to Aldershot. Europe. You were set up in London, living in London. That's right. Yeah. A bit like a horse and cart down in all the shot. I used to take the mick when I was a kid going down there. <laughs> on, you know, uh, you know. So you didn't fancy it? No, I didn't fancy it. So I moved to another firm that done orchestral percussion in London. Oh, right. So it was right around the same area in Soho. It was in Soho? Is that yeah. where, where Potters used to be? So I finished, yeah, more or less, so I finished work on the Friday night at Potter's after cleaning out all the um, dust and dirt yeah. and everything for a hundred years that we've been there. To clear the building, imagine, oh my clear goodness me. And then on the Monday morning, I came back to the same tube station, Tottenham Court Road, 
walk down Charing Cross Road, except I had to turn right down Old Compton Street. How funny. And, and go to sort of the other side of Soho to start in hunt. Just into I, a different warehouse, different building. Yeah, and learn all the, the orchestral percussion. Was that similar? It's still, if you like, in, in the drum thing, you, you're just expanding your knowledge. It's, yeah, the, the, the kind of transferable skills, the bases are there, yeah. you're just kind of adapting it for different purposes. A drum's a drum, you just make it slightly different for different Different reasons. shape, different, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. That was just drums then, or still flutes and? No, no, just the percussion. Just percussion? Yeah, yeah, so you, you're doing xylos, vibraphones, timpani. Yeah. You know, all that kind of thing. And if you wow. hit it or bang it or whatever, you know. You made it. <laughs> I'm supposed to repair it and make it. You know? So how long were you there for? Was there for about three years. Three years again. There seems yeah. to be a limit. Three years. Three Is that years. <laughs> what happens after three? You get How bored. Long have I How long have you? <laughs> I, just, I think you're coming up to three years. Yeah. Is that... It's on 20, 25 maybe ish. Yeah. Getting on to mid twenties. Yeah. Then what? Well, I fancy something different. Quick altogether. Left it as a roadie. No. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Just going with bands. Yeah. Yeah, just moving stuff around, bands. Yeah, That's right, just, yeah. Yeah, complete change. Yeah, complete change, saw the other side. Wow, still musical instruments. So this time you're the roadie that's breaking them, <laughs> that's shoving <laughs> no, them in no, the van. No, no, come on, come on, come on, I won't have that. Oh, the old roadie's getting blamed for everything. Well, exactly, I mean, the instrument's gonna get broken, it's gonna be the roadie, you know, put it in the van badly. Yeah, right. Oh, I almost done that for three Nearly years. Nearly three years, yeah. again, yeah. Three years again, yeah. <laughs> I gave in and moved to Aldershot and... Um, and you went back to Potters? I went back to Potters and I ended up sort of owning part of the company and then when it was quite a lot, that was George Potters in Aldershot, it was quite a lot of retail, it was a shop as well. Right, okay. I mean, music shops sadly are dying yep. quicker than pubs. Yeah, um, yeah. The it's... internet kills it. And so when we finally wrapped it up there, I went back to the old name of Henry Potters and back to the repairing, making the timpani, the yeah. block timpani that I make. So you've done something very similar to me and my Ranala journey of kind of acquiring an old company. You've now, That's right. you're the owner of Potters. Yeah. That you used to, you say you've gone from being an apprentice, day one, the new boy. Yeah. And now well, owning the company. That's right. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Brilliant. That's amazing. And so now you're in your own shop doing repairs, yeah. making. Making. This makes sense now. That's why you've got so many cool tools. Honestly, you've got some of the nicest, all your little mandrels and your dollies for the ends of the trumpets. Yeah. It, no, you can't. They, have it now. I know where they came from. <laughs> That day you were clearing out Potter's Warehouse when they when they closed down, That's right, yeah. a lot of that went in the back of your car, I, I imagine. All the workshop tools, you see. Did you actually? Yeah, I got all the workshop tools. Wow. Um, I mean, they're no good to anybody else. Literally they? nobody else. You, you just look around, if you've got something that you can't, you haven't got a special tool for. Yeah. You look around the workshop and you go, oh, come on, I can make it. I mean, yeah, if I use a bit of that and a bit of that, yeah, I can yep. put that together. And Cut off the end off that, twist that and put that in there, that'll do. That's right, that, yeah. that's the way I was told, because if you went to the boss and said, can I have a new tool for doing this job? He'd go, how much? Ooh, no, no. No chance. No, no chance. No. So, I mean, you it's a bit like working here sometimes. I was just going to say, it's exactly the same as me sitting out there struggling with trying to make stuff, trying to do it here. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you yeah, still I enjoy know. it after all these years? Yeah, everyone's different. Yeah. There's always something different. If, if you lose your interest, you might as well give up. Yeah, you got to every, you got to love what you're doing. Yeah, you got to love what you're doing, and every time a job goes out, you've never quite got to be happy with it. Oh, really? Do you, you think? Can always think you. Could, I could have done that just that one yeah. little bit, a I, little bit better. I know exactly what you mean. I feel exactly yeah. the same. Everything, pretty much everything that we I ever work on, there's always something that's just like, ah, oh, I wish. I've just done that. Yeah. And it's tiny sometimes, little small things, but... Yeah, that most people wouldn't notice. Most people wouldn't even notice, yeah. No. There you go. That's Pete, yeah. everybody. From, what's it, uh, Pot just Potters now. Potters. Henry Potter and Co. Henry Potter and Co. It's Pete Woods. What a legend. Pete sums up what I absolutely love about being here and working at the repair shop. Just a whole lifetime of experience. From a 16-year-old kid, he spent most of his life messing around, learning, playing, building, repairing, working with musical instruments, drums, and it's just, 
he's got such a wealth of knowledge and he's so modest. He, the way he talks is just like, oh, you know, yeah, I worked at Potter's, yeah, now I own it, yeah. I worked my way up and now, now it's my company. He's always my go-to guy. Whenever there's something tricky, some old transfers, like water slide transfers, or some old technique, like especially the Babbit that I've been working on with the Ranala, I've been quizzing Pete about that. We do give him some grief here, but he likes it. He's got that brilliant workshop mentality where you just can take the mick out of each other and it is what it is, you know, it's, he's, he's a brilliant guy. I better not give him too many compliments actually now because he might watch this and we don't want, you know, don't want all this going to his head. So it's the end of the week here at the repair shop. I'm about to put all my stuff back in the van and head back to the workshop. It's been good. It's been a good week. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Next week, we'll be back on the crane restoration. Hopefully, Glenn will have finished the hydraulics and I will be, hopefully, I'll get Sunday um, to get some time to work on the crane. But uh, for now, I will end the video here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've had a good Sunday and a good weekend. Ready for the week. See you next time. Thank you. This can at least be the wide shot. I mean, it's prettier than Dan, isn't it? Exactly, I know. Yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she'll probably do a better job as well, to be fair. Nobody's turned up to film us, have they? No, they're useless. Bottled it. Useless. Oh, you'll have to go back to Daphne. <sighs> you better scrub the first bit and apologise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of that will be edited out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>